Hi, this is Connor for Ab Divisions, and today I'm going to be talking about my second ever photo fact of the week. So last week's was kind of scientific, so this week I figured I would make it a little bit more historical and fun. This weekend I was out at a polo game taking pictures, and I happened upon this picture that I had taken, where all four of the horse's hooves were off the ground at once. Now you might think that that doesn't really matter too much, and who cares? This is actually something that was kind of really important around the turn of the 20th century for photography. Now, down here we have this guy, Edward Maybridge. He was a photographer who started um, in the late 1860s after he hit his head really, really hard in a stagecoach accident and kind of, uh, while in the care of a doctor in England, decided that he wanted to start taking pictures because there were some really cool inventions coming out at the time and all of them were related to cameras. So he started taking pictures and back in those days camera was kind of just a box with a lens on it or even just a, a pinhole. Um, so you'd mount the film kind of in the back of the camera right here. The photographer would be standing back here under a sheet or whatever. You've seen the old pictures, right? It's all on some giant tripod. And that's because it took a really long time to properly expose this image because this opening was really small. And what photographers normally do is they'd have a little piece of wood or a lens cap or whatever, right? And so they'd put the film in the back with this over the, the lens, right? So we have the wood over the lens. And um, then when they were ready, they'd quick slide this out of the way for a few seconds and then put it back over there. And so that would have gotten them the correct exposure, putting everything uh, from their image onto the screen. And so Edward over here was actually pretty famous for taking some pictures in Yellowstone, I believe. He was a well-known landscape photographer. But then, in 1872, Leyland Stanford, who was the former governor of California at the time, and who would eventually go on to found Stanford University, um, decided that he wanted to know uh, whether a horse ever did actually have all four of its hooves off the ground at the same time. He had a bet with a lot of his friends, and uh, they were all into horse racing. So, he said, all right, $25,000, Edward, can you somehow use your camera to figure out whether or not this ever happens? So, Edward was left with a pretty challenging predicament, um, because, I mean, remember, this takes, like... A long time. It would take seconds even for this to happen for the photographer. Even if you were doing it as fast as you could, you couldn't get a fast enough shutter speed to move the thing away and bring it back in and get the horse really uh, frozen in frame in a high quality image. So Edward needed to come up with a kind of interesting solution. And he also needed to do this in such a way that um, he could take multiple pictures of the horse kind of moving down trotting along so you could see the transition because he knew that he wouldn't just get lucky like I did. This was taken on a D3S at 9 frames per second so obviously you can't just pick and choose and randomly get it right every time. You need to be able to be taking a lot of pictures pretty quickly to uh, get a picture where the horse is like this and he knew that. He figured, okay, assuming Stanford's right because Stanford's betting his friends this, Stanford's betting that the horse's hooves come off so I need to get that picture so I just need to take a lot of pictures. So his solution um, by the way, this is before the time of video or motion pictures, so his solution was, I'm going to get a lot of cameras lined up in a row. He actually got, I believe it was 16 cameras lined up, one right after another, and then we have our horse racing track right here, and so all of these cameras are looking out at a different spot on the horse track. And the horse is, I tried to draw a horse last week, I don't know how we keep getting back onto this, but I think it's pretty safe to say I can't draw, especially on the spot. Um, so that's our sad, sad horse right there. Um, and it has its little rider buddy on it. And it's moving down this way. So, what Edward Maybridge did was he got a little pin wire, right? And there was something that made it delay in between each camera. Um, but basically what it did was it mechanized the shutter release. for It mechanized pulling away the blocks that were in front of each camera. 
So what he actually ended up doing was he put some stuff on a spring, and as best as I can understand, this is kind of, the actual contraption is a little bit sketchy. He had a piece of wood, and he drilled a little hole in it, right? And then he got a second piece of wood up here, and he drilled another little hole in that. And so this one's on a spring, and this one just has gravity. So when this little string, right, so this is all coming from, like, in here. When this string gets taken away, this one is falling down from gravity, and this one is being shot up. And I'm assuming they must have been lined up somehow. But, so for that split second, we have the two pieces of wood. This is going to represent the hole in the wood, right? This one's moving down, this one's moving up. For a split, split second, they're going to be lined up perfectly with their little slots in a line. And so light was going to get through and get to the film. And so you get a sharp image. And by doing this, he was able to get a shutter speed of about one five hundredth of a second. And that was really, really cutting edge for 1878 when this finally happened. Um, there was some stuff with Edward Maybridge shooting and killing his wife's lover. Uh, so Stanford had to kind of get him out of jail to actually finally do this experiment. So it took a few years, but eventually they got it. Um, so, this is where the kind of cool stuff comes in. He took all the pictures, and then he developed this really neat invention called, oh, I'm going to probably mispronounce this, but I believe it's a zoopraxiscope. Um, so, what that was, was this. This thing right here. Um, it's just a little piece of glass, right? And you would partition the image around it, and you just play this through a projector, spinning really, really quickly. And you'd see, oh, you see this frame, this frame, this frame, this frame. So it's kind of like an early motion picture. This was before they had rolls of film and would just project them that way. So this was kind of like the first way to show a motion picture, a zoopraxiscope. So Edward was a kind of cool guy for making that. And then, I'll show you here, i got to pull it up really quickly. Um, he actually finally got this series of pictures, the horse in motion created by Maybridge, and you can see that he eventually did prove and got Stanford $25,000 that the horse was completely aloft with all four hooves off the ground. So I just wanted to share this because I thought it was interesting that I happened to get the same picture by luck this weekend, and just to show you what was happening about a century ago uh, in cutting-edge technology and photography. Uh, so we have a pretty cool place in history as photographers in science. And today, if you want to see some more stuff that's really cool that we're doing with high-speed photography, even though it's on a completely different scale because 100 years has passed by, check out what MIT is doing at 1 trillion, yes, 1 trillion frames per second. Um, they're studying light, actually, so it's a bit faster than a horse, but it's the same idea. Just really, really cool observing how things move quickly around us. So... Hopefully you've liked this video, and next week I got requested to do a video on filters, so I'll be doing that, and I'll see you next time.